just get a, a good grasp of it. It's funny, like smiling until the camera is on. Davy smiles a lot until the camera's on him. <laughs> We've explored a lot of really incredible instruments on this channel, massive instruments, crazy musical gear. So I of course said yes when Davy re reached out a few days ago about going to this museum and check out um, some cool instruments, particularly a very, very large bass. Of course I need the bass. A absolutely. <laughs> nah. <laughs> We're at the Musical Instrument Museum in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, made famous, at least for me, by Mystery Guitar Man, who was here a while back, and Davey reached out, and that's if I want to go with him, so I, of course, said, yeah. If Davey504 asks you to go see a really big bass you with him... You have to do it. Absolutely. <laughs> I will call the police. Exactly. And I can't have another bass-related offense on my record. I already used a pick on the last 1st of October album. So I guess I should just give you some general background of MIM. It's a 200,000 square foot museum. We have over 7,000 instruments on display at any one time. So how long have you had your YouTube channel? Eight years. Eight years? Yes. So quite a while. Yeah. And how long have you been playing bass? Nine years. Nine years. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's rich. We can take kind of a quick tour around the museum. If you have particular interests, we can certainly steer it that direction. Speaking of my particular interests. <laughs> <laughs> we do this in the orientation space of the museum because a guitar is a pretty well-known, familiar instrument around the world. And if a guitar can look all these different ways and can take all these different permutations, magnify that by flutes, drums, horns, all these different designs come from all parts of the world. The Portuguese guitar here is arguably, you know, it's the first instrument you can really call uh, an intentional full-size guitar. Late 1500s, wow. when it was kind of a transition between the vihuela and, and what we consider a guitar now. I need the bass. We've got an Africa gallery, Asia, Middle East, thousands of instruments on display. Yeah. We have video monitors accompanying every exhibit. Yes, yeah, so you can. You've got them. these headphones. It pairs with the video. You can hear instruments. You can watch them being played, and it turns into a pretty immersive experience. Mm -hmm. Bass. Our current portrayal of. Italian music, including the, the great legacy of violin makers, various regional traditions, some really nice old mandolins, and this <laughs> mando bass actually in our mandolin orchestra. That's a pretty wild wow. instrument yeah. with the height of the mandolin orchestra craze. When was the height of the mandolin orchestra craze? I didn't, I didn't know that there was a mandolin orchestra. Late 19th century, early 1900s, early 20th century, and all these mandolin orchestras, so you'd have mandolin, mandola, mando cello, mando bass, um, and just like all over the country. Yeah. That came from one of the members of the original quarrymen, Rod Davis, so it's kind of cool to have, you know, contemporary instruments, but also the, the more folk instruments that people mm -hmm. have obviously used and continue to use to make real music. This is our conservator, Rodrigo. Uh, Hi, he Rob. takes care of the collection and takes care of all the instruments here. We don't yeah. typically play collection objects, so it's always important to have our conservator on board and, and aware of what's going on. Lots of strings. <laughs> Not the bass. Tim Alexander. What? Uh, from Primus. What? Yeah. And a, a number of years ago, he came Excuse and actually me? played uh, here in the gallery. It was pretty cool. I, oh, I no started kidding. playing music because of Primus. Yeah, well, that's... Seriously. Tim said... Whoa. Played on Silly Seas Cheese and Poor Soda? Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be fanboying so hard when I came here. Well, this is the drum set from Tommy the Cat. That's why I have a double kick pedal. Sorry, I'm fanboying really hard right now. <laughs> this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Can we get a photo real quick? We've got a, a dedicated artist gallery downstairs, but more and more things we have on display are from the careers of yeah. significant people. So whether it's Sonic Youth or Aerosmith or The Who, mm -hmm. you know, they've gone beyond our artist gallery. Now we've got artists all over the museum, so people who are the equivalent of the Eric Clapton's and the mm -hmm. Paul McCartney's from all over the world. We've got their instruments. But yeah, this is one of the co-founders of 
the Roberto Venn School, William Eaton, built that extended range harp guitar. Any possible direction is like one amazing video. Yeah. And we have like 40 minutes to look through all of it. If you know yeah. the Wrecking Crew, uh, the LA the, Session the Musicians, um, Hal Blaine's drum kit, Tommy Tedesco's guitar, I mean those are the instruments mm -hmm. that have been heard by virtually everyone on the planet. Wow, Upright, here we go. Bass. Oh wow. Bass. This is more of my scene. Too many strings on it. Right for it. Very much growing in popularity with like electric guitars. It's yeah. just more and more strings. And yeah. Well, and, and basses, you know? Yeah, yeah. He yeah. has a 24 string. Is that right? Yeah. A bass? Yeah. Is it single strings or in multiple courses? I have 36 strings bass, single oh. strings. Single oh. strings. And 24 strings, it's a three plates of strings. Like eight. Yeah. Okay. With a, like a 32 string bass, is it tuned in familiar intervals or yeah. is it like chromatic? It would be like four nine string spaces. Across the octaves? Yes. Yeah. It's also cool to run into people who have experimented and tried to see if this will work and why sometimes uh, people have learned, you know, 32 is cool, <laughs> but four gets the job done. <laughs> what is the verdict, Davey? Does 36 work? Yes. Yeah. And no. <laughs> yes and no. Not the bass. actually one of the ones I think is pretty cool, you know. Is this just, you know, EADG? You know, I don't even know how it's tuned. It certainly could be tuned yeah. that way. That's the neat thing about MIM. It's really neat to see the adaptations of familiar instruments yeah. and how they take on the local culture and the local aesthetics. <laughs> Old Vietnamese cast drums. It's an amazing art form. Yeah. When people play their own instruments and they see something that's a little bit familiar but just different enough, they, are, they start thinking, man, if I took the frets out or if I added a mm -hmm. string, all the ideas that start coming out from people's traditional instruments from around the world, you can imagine how that might apply to, to yeah. what you have at home. That's, that's kind of how I uh, go about learning just about any new instrument is kind of how it relates to the guitars that I play because yeah. that's what my what I'm most familiar with. Whether it's a harp or a pluriarch or something like that, you know, do you put the strings all in one plane? Does every string have a separate neck? Do you have frets yeah, to stop different. it? Do you have a neck to stop it? Is it more like a harp? Is it more like a lute? This yeah, seems like an entire video here. Can we have a token for this? You have to say pretty please. <laughs> Can I pretty please have a token? Thank you, sir. <laughs> Yeah, this is. I can't tell you which holes are controlling which the different instruments, but that's how it all works. Not bass. I need the big bass now. We'll go down and get situated and and get the octobase ready to go. You come around the corner to see oh, the Oh, man. You know, the frequencies are so low, when you're playing it, it doesn't make much sense. I mean, it, it's just kind of a rumble, it doesn't, you can't really distinguish pitches when you're really up close and yeah, playing it. How low does this go? It goes down to a C0, so 16 hertz. Technically below yeah. like a, a real distinct human hearing, but you can hear it a lot better out by the escalator because that wavelength is so huge, it needs physical space to develop. <laughs> yeah. It sounds better out there actually because it just, it needs room. From high to low, it's D, G, C. 
basically like a cello, but lower. Mm -hmm. Much lower. Yeah, two octaves below a cello. It's barely not touching the ceiling. The space certainly just barely clears it. We knew this was going to be part of the collection, and so it does just fit. It really hasn't left other than on one occasion we deinstalled it, moved it down to our theater, and Hans Zimmer, who is the, the great film yeah, score composer, sampled this octobase. You'll discover it is not a great solo instrument. Everything happens pretty slowly on the octobase, but it's also really an impressive musical instrument that did have a real job. You know, so in the 1850s, that was the only way you could get those, those notes and that carrying power, like in a large festival setting, so you have a couple of those in the orchestra and you're not playing melodies, you're certainly, you're barely even playing harmonies, you're just putting a, mm. like a physical presence out into the audience. How popular were these in the 1850s? The 1850s? I don't think they were terribly popular, they didn't yeah. really take off, so to speak, and there are still two or three originals remaining, not all of those are playable. So this is a contemporary uh, reimagining of the octobase, the mechanism, for changing the pitches is actually improved compared to the original. We've got the benefit of, of different materials. Yeah. And it was strung with different strings, and it was actually a combination, I think, of hand and foot levers to help uh -huh. get the leverage to stop the string. So this just has a number of slightly modernized improvements, but the concept is just the same. It's built like a real instrument, so even those tuning pegs at the top are functional friction tuning pegs. They're not just decorative, they're real pegs. In this application, their job is really just to hold tension and the fine tuning happens yeah. down on the tailpiece mm -hmm. just for practicality. Uh -huh. It needs Very a custom special. bow yeah. just to, uh, I mean, it needs to be stout enough to even give the sufficient energy to get those strings moving. Mm -hmm. pretty big. Guy. <laughs> yeah. Each one of these corresponds to a half step. Uh -huh. It's basically like a mechanical capo. You can't really do a, a standard grip just because the bow is, is too big, so just get a, a good grasp of it. Everybody. This video isn't sponsored by anyone, um, or I guess it's sponsored by me. We have these eight string ornaments available for the rest of the year, and I just think they're a really cool thing. They're also available in the Anchor EP bundle. They will add more strings to your Christmas tree. Just want to say Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Merry whatever it is you celebrate or you don't celebrate. 
Um, these also work great as an air freshener on bypass. Uh, <laughs> bad musician jokes, but yeah, so it's a cool thing that's gonna be there for the rest of the year. Hope you have a wonderful rest of the year. Me and the team are gonna be taking off January. We got a few more videos, especially one with Davey coming soon. And then we're looking forward to some really cool stuff in 2020. So thanks so much for being a fan of the channel. Uh, we so appreciate it. Ornaments below, let's get back to the video. Can I play it a bit, is that fine? <laughs> Wow. I mean, lowest note first, right? It's like different levers of different flavors of earthquake. I never play with a bow, especially one this big. <laughs> no one does. Yeah, I do. guess you're right, yeah. and staying on the string and everything. It takes a little bit of practice and a little yeah. bit of nuance. Hector Berlioz actually composed parts for that, you know, so it, there were orchestral scores that called for octobase. Yeah. No one was shredding on it, you know, but, but there were <laughs> real parts written for that instrument. It's a legit part of musical history when there was no other way to make that happen. Kind of something. Yes. <laughs> oh, you doing jazz? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's not the first time anyone's done it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a popular tune on the octave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Yeah, there's like this low frequency, you can actually see it. You could see the frequency. <laughs> Pretty good for, <laughs> for both of you. So, thank you. It's a real instrument, it's designed to be played, and that's the nice thing about having a contemporary one. So, this is an Italian luthier, he built a real octo bass. When we're talking about the science of sound and, and vibrations translating the sound, you know, when you, you get that string moving, you can see with your eye. Yeah, this is a vibrating. That's... 16 String. times a second. Yeah, and so it. it's one thing to, to have the abstract concept on a violin, but then on the octo bass, you're really seeing uh -huh. that cause and effect, which is really exciting. So we're hearing the upper harmonics of that right now, because we, of course, are not hearing the 16 hertz. We must be hearing the higher octave and fifth, because I can hear a pitch. I mean, I don't think I'm just imagining it. Right, <laughs> and, yeah, and th there are a lot of overtones going on, but yeah. in terms of basic rumble, uh, that's where it gets pretty indistinct and muddy, uh -huh. but when you are closer to the escalator, you know, whether it's just my imagination or, or pure physics, you know, it feels like you can hear it better because it uh -huh. needs that space for the wavelength. Yeah, well I found that with recording upright bass, like you, yeah. you need to give it some space for the recording or it kind of just becomes indistinguishable. And that's, you know, at E, this yeah. is what, two octaves lower, more that's than two right. octaves lower than that? Yeah. 
that's the open low string of a standard bass, mm. and then everything yeah. is beyond. <laughs> I'm sorry, so that's E again? So this the high string, what is that? So this is a D. Yeah, D. So it's so like drop on D. The second lever. Oh, I didn't realize you were using the lever. Yeah. So that should be the low range mm -hmm. of an otherwise standard bass. Really glad you got to play the octo bass. We're proud of it. It's a really cool highlight of Mim's collection, and so it is a special occasion when we get to demonstrate it and share it with people who know what they're seeing. So uh, really glad you could come by. Our pleasure. That low string is still going. <laughs> yeah. It's going to go until next week. <laughs> so special thanks to the Musical Instrument Museum, Phoenix, Arizona, for letting us play these. This has been awesome. Check them out if you're around. Well, Davey, thanks so much for bringing me out with you as well. I re really appreciate it. And he's going to have a video on his channel playing this bass, and then we have a bass lesson which, with us coming up pretty soon if you'd like to subscribe. Also subscribe to Davey, of course, if you're into bass at all. So 